Welcome to Rack of the Week 193. In keeping with my idea of showing different players other than me, we're going to look at a player named Danny Baruti. But first, I want to thank my Patreon and YouTube supporters. John, Christian, Rick, Tom, Brian, Chris, James, John, Corby, Michael, Bahad, Richard, Indian Heathen, Charlie, Ken, Rainier, Fred, Leroy, and Christopher. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. This is Danny Baruti. He is a well-liked fixture of the straight pool scene and a member of the straight pool Hall of Fame. And you'll always know, uh, be able to recognize him because he's wearing his signature hat. As you can imagine, Danny plays what I call old school. And he probably wouldn't disagree with that. I call this Rack of the Week piece of cake. I could have, could have picked a lot of racks uh, by Danny, but in this one... What I really appreciate about the old school players, they can come to the table where it looks like there's just a convoluted mess, and they might only have one shot to start with. And they like they study the rack, and then within two to three shots, all of a sudden, everything's wide open, and there's a clear path to navigate all the balls with a really nice end pattern, and they're on their break shot. And you're looking at it going, what? how did they do that? People used to say that about Willie Moscone all the time. He would study the rack for a minute or two, start shooting, ba-boom, next thing you know, he's on the break shot. You're going to see that in this rack, and that's why I call it a piece of cake. The rack goes from what looks impossible to what looks easy in a very short period of time. And as you can see in the opening shot, Danny misplayed his break shot. He's got to draw the cue ball back, and he might only get one ball open, or not, barely one ball. So... He did everything he could with that break shot. He had such a shallow angle. And now he's got a difficult shot. I believe he goes and grabs the bridge. Nope, he's going to stretch out and shoot this. And he's not going to hit it hard at, at, like you would expect me. I would just blast it. Just hit it hard enough to get the balls open. And as it as it is, he has one shot. So, you know, let's look at this and do some rack analysis. Uh, this looks like a really hard rack because you've got these balls tied up. You've got a little bit of congestion here. You do have some break shots to choose from. There's three of them, the four and whatever those two balls. And then there's two balls up table. So there's a lot of work to be done. But take a look at Danny. Now, obviously, he's going to shoot the five, but he's studying the whole rack. Look at him. He's thinking, he's thinking many balls ahead. Yeah, see, he's going to, before he shoots this, he's going to go take a look. What goes where? What pockets are open, available for what balls and from where? Paths to pockets. And what does he need to do to open things up? So he's going to bump into the four ball here. This is really all he can do. And he's playing position on that four or the seven, whichever happens to work out best. Now, you might think, oh, I'm going to, you know, you need to stroke a ball and just bump them and, and, you know, rearrange the furniture and get balls open. But no, old school is about playing the balls way that where the, where they lie and maneuvering around and getting the right angle. So here, I believe he's going for that five ball. So he's on the correct side of the five. Is that the five or the one? I can't tell this ball right here to nudge the 11 just a little bit but roll forward off from the nudge to play position for one of these balls. I mean, to me, that looks clever, but that's the type of thing that Danny does all the time. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. And now, look at the just a delicate touch. I want you to notice something about else about Danny when he shoots. I, as you know, I'm a really big proponent of keeping your elbow up during your stroke. Watch his, his shooting arm elbow. That elbow stays up, and it, it kind of it, it even moves a little bit to, to stay up on every shot, kind of like Shane Van Boney. So it looked like there was a mess there, and like you would need to move those balls. He didn't move a single ball except for that 11 he moved about an inch, and he nudged the four ball. But that's what old school straight pool is. Not breaking up clusters, but simply nudging balls in little ways to create openings. Now, you notice he didn't shoot that 11 because it didn't lead to anything. He needed to, uh, to clear these balls. So I'm going to hit pause right here. Because of the way the balls lie, he's got multiple options. I, I think what he was intending to do on the ball that he just shot 
was to come up here and possibly nudge the one. Kind of move it up here a little bit. The six ball would be the break ball. But the reason is you've got this ball right here. So it's a risk-free shot. And, and so if you're doing that, then you'd clear these two balls, go up table, and use the one ball as the key ball for this, this uh, break shot right here. Um, he missed that, and he's almost straight in on the nine. So immediately he just goes to, oh, I'll just clear these balls, then come back down table and use these to get on the break shot. So what looked like a, a tied-up mess right after the break shot, a few shots later, it's just a piece of cake. Just tic-tac-toe, connect the dots. That's if you can see the whole table at once and understand how balls connect. That's what you're seeing. Okay? So he's not going to try anything fancy. Just going to the side rail and out to get on the one ball. So now he can go one, one, and then this stripe, and then this ball, and come straight up, or go two rails around to get on the six. See how there's multiple ways that he could have run out when there were six or seven balls left on the table. That's what you see from really good old, old school straight pool players. Yeah, he's taking a look at this now and thinking about what does he want. Um, this is really good because... As you know, I like uh, laying the cue ball. Oh, I'm trying to get my pen to work. I like laying the cue ball low because then you can just send your cue ball up one rail. If you get a little bit higher, then you would send your cue ball to the rail, follow to the rail with a lot of spin and spin it up, and then you're going to get the right angle. If he could shoot a, almost a stop shot, let's say the cue ball would be right here, then you have the two rail route like this. And if the cue ball, I'm trying to get my pen to work. My mouth, it's my mouse that's sticking on me. Sometimes it starts to stick. And, it, and if when he shoots this shot, if the cue ball um, goes a little bit higher, let's say the cue ball finishes up here, then you've got to go one rail and try and come past your break ball to get there. So there's there's lots of options, but this is the mark of a professional. He, he got down on the shot, and then he realized, wait a minute, let's make a firm decision here. Got back up off the shot. Now he's deciding which of those locations he wants to his cue ball to, uh, to arrive at. Look at the spin on that ball. The farther the cue ball is from the object ball, the less impactful the wrong angle is. So by spinning it over here, he gets the optimal angle. He can just follow two rails out. Notice that that's a lot of, a lot of spin. I've talked about this before. Here's the shot line. When your cue ball hits the rail here, if you don't have any spin and you're just playing the angles, it can come this way, and you have a small target zone to stay on the correct side of the line. But if you have spin on the cue ball when it hits the rail in the same spot, then it's coming up this way. And you're never going to cross the shot line. You're always going to have an angle on your break shot. Let's see, this is just slightly outside, probably going to follow. The, yeah, he's going to follow. Now, I've talked about this, too. Look at the topspin. You've got to have a lot of topspin to get the cue ball to come off the rack into the bottom rail. So that was a fairly um, forceful break shot. But even so, the, uh, the ball's open pretty well, and uh, he's got lots of options to continue the run. I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't had the pleasure... Go to YouTube and type in uh, Baruti uh, 14 1 or Baruti Straight Pool and watch some of the matches so you can see what an old school master looks like. And I will see you next time on Shortstop on Pool. If you're going to play pool, play it straight. Bye.